Kia, Silva, Badass Your Brand, No BS Agency Podcast, No BS Agency Owners Free Facebook Group. Welcome to the Sales Podcast. How the heck are you? Thank you so much, Wes. I am better now that I'm here. There you go. Best answer ever. Show me that book again. I was reading your bio. Look at that. But my hair is, you know, just telling. A little longer. It's telling. <laughs> it's a little while ago. Hey, I'm changing my hair. That's why I got a hat yeah, on. Yeah, Mine's yeah, Mine's always yeah. short. Now I'm growing it out. And it's like in this ugly in-between stage. And I got five daughters. And I'm like, what do I do, girl? Do I cut it again? Or do y'all going to start styling this thing? I don't know. So I just throw a hat on. I like it. I like I don't it. Know. What, what do I do? Do I grow it? Do I, do I match you I and love, grow my hair up? I love hair. Yeah. I love hair. All right. I don't I'm think it's in between. You should wear it. Oh, it's totally in between. Proud. It's all curly, too. So we shall see. We yeah, shall own see. it. I, I, own it. I saw, uh, I forget this dude's name. I think he played for Notre Dame. And he's, he's a, so it's funny. All right. Men and women are different, aren't we? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to say yes. But anyway. Mm hmm some football player, Dartman, I think, I forget, but he's got this like dark beard and this long flowing hair and like all the women are like, I don't know who he plays for, but that's my new favorite team. So I'm like, all right, I'm going <laughs> to grow mine out. I'm going to look like this football player. See if it works. Women love hair, which you can't say anywhere because people I gotta don't I got to convince my it. wife though. She, 29 years. She doesn't dig the beard. So I shave once a week. We shall see. But anyway, why are you badass? What makes you badass? Do you just claim to be badass and now you own it? Or were you already badass and then you said, I should, I should use that name? Well, it happened 12 years ago. Let's go back to the beginning. 12 years ago, I am sitting at a coffee shop with my business coach at the time trying to figure out how I am going to be different. And he keeps needling me. Why are you different? Why are you different? Why do people want to work with you? And I kept I like, I don't know, we're creative. My husband's an artist. We know more about design, blah, blah, blah. And he just kept being like, what is it? What is it? What is it? I was like, because we're fucking badass. I don't know. And he was like, clutch my pearls. And he was like, you should say that. I can't say that. I can't say that because I don't know if you remember 12 years ago, but it was like practically cursing when you said it 12 years ago. So he was like, I think you can. He's like, all right, I'm going to do it. And so. So I started to completely own it. And sure enough, like I had people come up to me. I, was, I spoke at the um, Chamber of Commerce once and someone came up to me after and they were like, I loved your content, but like, I really didn't appreciate your um, like cursing on stage. I was like, first of all, it's not a curse. And second of all, okay, you're just not my client. I don't know what else to tell you. But a lot has changed in the last 12 years. So I don't feel like it's near, it's like, it's like not that at all now. People say it like in passing in their like lame little font on their website. I don't think that means it, but why am I badass? It's because I do what I want and I say what I want and I get it and I don't give a shit about it. Right? There you is, go. That, is that good enough? Hey, a lot of people, I mean, I think most people, I, I've had this discussion with others over the years and some agree, some disagree, but it's like, I think people are more afraid of success than failure. And so just claiming that and saying, I'm going to live up to it, I think most people would be afraid to do. Totally. I think it takes, uh, you have to build quite a bit of confidence over many, many years to yeah. be able to say that and do it. Because people would ask me, like, why are you the sales whisperer? I'm like, because I bought the domain name and trademarked it. Like, I don't know. Why was Captain Kangaroo a captain? Because he said Dr. Seuss wasn't a doctor. I don't know. I could be the sales whisperer. <laughs> Yeah, but you also knew a lot about sales when you did that, right? I did. Wasn't your first rodeo. I don't know if Captain Kangaroo knew anything about kangaroo stuff. I barely remember Captain Kangaroo. I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> old. Thanks for reminding me. Okay, but for the record, I didn't need lip stuff for this episode. No, okay, no. So, so I there. did, because look, oh, <laughs> these lights wash me out. All right. Yeah, so that's cool. And yes, I mean, I, the language has changed over the year. I mean, like, you got like Gary Vaynerchuk. Right? He's been dropping F-bombs from the beginning. And, you yeah. know, look, I, I grew up playing ball, military. I can make a sailor blush. But, I mean, it's not how I project myself in general. Uh, but I've got a little cartoon called, you, you know, Diary of a Wimpy Kid? You know mm -hmm. that series? No? 
No, what is that? Oh, the, you don't have kids, do you? I have a six-year-old. Wow. Should I know about this? Should I bring this home? Yeah, it's a Should cool... I say the sales whisperer just told me about this? Yeah, Excel? yeah. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge series. I mean, it's, okay. I don't know, it's 15, 20 years old. Okay. Uh, and it's a little stick figure, but it's, a, it's, a, and they, they've made movies about it. And oh yeah, I actually reached out to the guy years ago before he got super famous to see if he wanted to partner on this. But the idea is this, this wimpy kid, he, he thinks he's all that in a bag of donuts. So it's, it's like a, a, a play on things. He mm-hmm. thinks he's super special, so his diary is like how special he is, but he fails and, and whatever. Yeah, it's a whole series. It's it's appropriate for kids. Um, and so I I, I made uh I bought wimpysales.com. So it's the diary of a wimpy salesman. And because um, like like your coach, like how can you be different? It's like that you you can't throw a dead cat and not hit a you know, six sales trainers. Uh and so I've had a little the alter ego, right? So mm-hmm. the diary of wimpy sales when the guy's little bow tie and, uh, yeah. you know, so it's, it's always coming out, thinks he's all that, but, but he's really not. But so I just try to show the negative, but, but then I, I add a little tag, a tagline, you mm-hmm. know, and it says, buy my shit, mm-hmm. you know? So <laughs> it's, yeah. um, just say it how it is. Well, say it how you know, it is. our agency is worst of all design. And that is, that is what I used to tell people. Why is it badass? Well, because what is we just, what you, worst of all or first of all? Worst of all. Here, worst of all. Worst of, worst all, of all design. Designed. Interesting. I love it. Because why not? Because people yeah. who get it, get it. Yeah. Because branding agencies want to tell you, you sh- we're going to help you stand out, but they all say the same stuff. So, you know, instead we're just, we are different. People get, our people get it magnetically attracted I, I'll, I'll use things because i do some writing and i'll help people with it and, mm-hmm. and i had one of the taglines is like you know, I, I help you write write more gooder or write more better you know huh? i'll put it That's in good. italics so it's huh? but i've had literal people like linkedin whatever oh, you don't know how to look at that I'm like okay you are not my client <laughs> you know? and also come on you can't tell that i don't know what the word i just used you know, it, I learned that years ago, a marketing guy, Roy Williams down in Austin, he calls it Seussing, you know, because Dr. Seuss, like he makes up words and you read it and you just know exactly what that word is. It just fits, but it's a made up word. Yeah. You know, and it, and it, it, part of the brain he talks about, it's called surprising broca, right? Part of the brain that mm-hmm. kind of routes things that are new and interesting and, and the boring things it throws away, but people, good or rare, better or what you know it's like that's a great line of all design and Works that's how design. I, I found you I, I i saw your ads i just recently last month or so i'm like man this is some good stuff like you got oh you got good ads so it's good that you eat your own dog food right Cause a lot of people they're you know the cobbler's kids have no shoes right it's like that you're putting your money where your mouth is i appreciate that yeah and i mean i work with all like branding design marketing people and tell them you're your best you need to be your best client you're the you're you being your best client is your best opportunity because you get to show off everything you want to do for other people and they don't you know that's i don't know why it's hard though it's hard we never put ourselves first oh i got a client work i gotta go finish them i'll get to that tomorrow next week next year oh crap excuses how do you make yourself a priority? We always were doing it for worst of all design because working on our brand, like when we found the badass thing and then we said, you know, our tagline is badass brands without the BS. And there's a, a whole reason for that. It's not just lip service. You know, I, I learned by going out and pounding the pavement in New York City and meeting people and talking to them. I was like, the more I am this brand, the more people are coming to me and saying, I want that. I, like, I don't even need case studies. They're like, I want what you've got. When I went to your website, I was like, yes, yes, I'm feeling this. Like, I, I am that person. I want that. And they would all say, they'd be like, I, you know, I want to be badass. Not like you're badass. You know, I don't want to be badass like, as, like you, but like, I want some of that. Like, this is the best marketing tool I could have is my own brand. So uh, I've, you know, I, I learned that pretty quickly. And I've just been like, yeah, just banging that, ringing that bell this whole time saying real opportunity missed if you aren't spending time on your own brand and business. 
as a branding yeah. company. Right. So, so 12 years, um, what, what is working now? Like has everything changed or the, are the fundamentals still the same? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, it's personally like I feel tired. <laughs> yeah. Social media is noisy, right? It's like, uh, I'm just, I'm going to tune out for a bit. I mean, it seems like there's more and more ads, right? Facebook, Instagram, the, the ratio seems to be going up in favor of ads. And, and, but, and then in between, like I'm muting people. It's just all politics and upset. Mm -hmm. Like people, I've actually gone back to watching some sports. I kind of tuned it out, but it's like, at least that's a getaway. And, and they've kind of stopped with the politics for the most part. Like, can, I just need to disconnect for a moment, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I did, I saw your ads and they were good and you stood out. So what, what has changed? That. What has stayed the same? Like what, what's working today? You know, I get what you're saying and I, it's not that I disagree, but I, I put some things in place in my own life to try to mute that. I bought something called a brick. Have you heard of the brick? I got, I bought this on Instagram. I love it. I love Instagram. I, uh, oh, I, do too. I, I yeah, no, no, no I, I know. Cur but you have to curate, you have to curate. your lip. Oh, but I you have to be conscious about mute, how you, yes, I mute, I'm, I block yes. with impunity. I, I do not, I, I, I am not here to, oh, I don't want to see that. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. And, and also I brick my phone, which I bought on Instagram which is like a, a physical thing where you can basically turn your apps off. And the only way you could turn them back on is to go to the physical thing. So I bought that for me and my husband um, and we break our phones. And so there's, you know, there's windows of time where I do it because I have to for my business. But, um, you know, I'm like, I'll go serve it up. Like, you know what I like to buy. I buy all my stuff on Instagram. Off of Instagram. I'm like, you know what I like. I am the target demo and I am here for it. But are you buying coaching and agency help or just retail items? Buying retail items. I am following people, certain people, because I like the kind of stuff they're talking about. It generally has to do with, because my business is, is different now, right? I'm coaching agencies. I'm not looking for that kind of consulting. At this point, my network is big enough that the people that I get coached by and, and even the people, if I need something, I'm usually asking other people for trusted advisors for recommendations. But I like, but the people who are really doing it well online, I like seeing what they're saying. I like seeing how they're doing it and, you know, getting inspiration from them. A lot of us are saying the same stuff. We're just saying it ideally differently. And I think that's cool. I think that's how it should be. And there's a way that everybody's going to enjoy it being said this way or that way differently. So there's enough to go around. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, so your, your coaching agency is now more. So what, what are they not doing? right? That, that makes them seek out your services. Is there a common theme that they're, that you're helping them, you know, write the ship? Yeah. I mean, I work with one to two person branding agencies, super niche. Um, I niched down. I was teaching a lot of this to general one to three person service businesses before that was my niche in my own agency. Um, but I decided to go in all in on coaching these small branding agencies because I was one. I had a lot of success in it. I wrote about it in my book, how I, um, how I took this model of scaled up our income and our profitability without hiring a team. And it's a very specific kind of person that wants to be able to make more and more money in less and less time without growing a team. And there's really only one way to do it. And it's becoming more and more valuable in the market and being able to deliver in a more and more efficient way. So that plus, you know, I have a sales process. I teach people that allows for that kind of trust to be built very quickly so that they're able to charge much more premium prices and then deliver in a short amount of time, which most design agencies branding agencies have a very hard time managing projects and keeping them on scope and you know, the way we do it is we build entire brands and websites, everything 
and we deliver it in a one to two day intensive, usually a two day intensive, and that's it. It's over at 6 p.m. And that gives you predictability about how profitable this is going to be, how you're going to run your life, how you're going to run your business. I think the thing that people are doing, the problem they're they're facing is that they're usually running their agencies the way big agencies run them, but they're not a big agency. They don't have the resources. They don't have the processes. And it's totally unprofitable. They're overworked and underpaid, which is, you know, what we hear from almost all businesses. <laughs> but it's, a big, it's very, very true in the agency world, the small agency yeah. world. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because I've got a client right now that um, is big in YouTube uh, and very good at it. And as we're working together, I keep, he had too many offerings and like, dude, we got to scale this down. And, and then we came up with these short intensives that he loves doing them and he's good at them. And it's like, you know, kind of light bulb went off. So it's cool hearing you say that. Because he's leaning me. He's got a few, his wife works with them and they got a couple of salespeople and then everybody else, you know, delivers. Because, uh, you know, with YouTube, there is, you can There's do a ongoing. quick launch, but then a lot of them, it's kind of yeah. ongoing. So they, so that's fine. But it's like for him, he was much more hands on than I thought. You know, on the outside, from outside looking in, I'm like, oh, this guy's got it going on. But he was doing way too much wrench turning as the owner. And then like, do these intensives, like, remember 2011, back when they were still in Fusionsoft, they rolled out their first two-day implementation acceleration. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was 10 grand for two days. And they, they launched it, like, after Thanksgiving, and they were going to do it, like, right before Christmas or maybe the week between Christmas and New Year's. And they were like, can you come help? And I said, yeah, I'll come help. And I was thinking in my mind, like, this ain't going to sell sold sold out like 20 20 something people you know close to a quarter million dollars and uh, then they made it three days but it was so good we just sat and worked and then i i took that same model it's like man let's get after it you know i i worked that way and and after all these years of doing it like i can kind of fix the big stuff fast you know there's always something to refine but like 80 20 rule, right? I can fix 80% of your stuff in two days, you know, and then you just maintain and, and grow from there. So I, I love that approach because, yeah, the ongoing, the nagging, the updates, like project management, let's get in a sauna and base camp and like, yeah. shoot me in the head. Oh my gosh. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm all in on this model. I love it. Yeah. And, um, so advertising, mm -hmm. are you like, what does that look like? How long does an ad last? Mm. How often are you making new stuff? Are you batching your own? Like you spend one or two days, batch a bunch of stuff and queue it up and let it, let it fly. Well, first I'm going to say that I don't recommend ads for any of the people that I coach for any of these small service businesses. I use ads because I have a different business model where I'm scaling up, a, you know, a training program where I can handle, I could handle twice as many clients right now and it wouldn't really change my day to day, which is a totally different thing than when you're doing services. That said, how do I do it? I have an agency that does it. That's cool. Cool. Be a, be I don't know. I don't product, know how right? they do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they do Let it. Someone else manage your stuff. I mean, cause it's hard yeah. doing it for yourself, right? Oh my gosh. And I, and if you don't know what you're doing, I mean, you can just, burn cash very quickly. And yeah. if you don't, you know, I tell people you shouldn't be spending money on ads until you've got a clear funnel that's converting and you use ads as like, you've got this beautiful campfire going and you pour fuel on it. You don't use ads to like try to start the fire. You can't start the fire with fuel. You need the light. So um, I'm, I'm always just like, I always have to say that because I feel like people think ads are the answer and like, no, no, no. Right. Yeah, I, um, it's one of the things I, I tell people, I work with them and they're running ads. I'm like, do you know your metrics? Do you know what's converting? Because until you've got the, the lower steps dialed in, just throwing more stuff against the wall. It's like, you're just, you're spending money to tell people you're bad. You know, it's like, let's get the offer dialed in. Let's get the stages. 
Then when you know you've optimized the conversions, now it's just a math problem. You know, but it's it's some grueling work, you know, looking at each of the little steps. You always, I got a program called Make Every Sale. And the, the concept is to make any sale, you must make every sale. There's five or 10 or 20 little sales you're making in any process, you know, to, to onboard a new client. And it's, uh, it can be tedious. I, I get it, you know, but. I love that you're saying that because that's also like, and after people make the sale, they forget that they're still selling. I try to tell people when, you know, teaching them the branding process, I'm like, that's when the real sales begin. You got to sell them on every aspect of this project, right? Like every piece of buy-in. I don't know if I can find it in my book that quick, but yeah, I call it A, B, C, D. So it's instead of a, a one-way pipeline or a one-way funnel, I've got it circular, mm. right? Like, um, yeah. You'll, you'll get into the, the water cycle, right, as your kid gets older, right? But you remember from school that, you know, it snows on the mountains, then it melts in the river and goes to the lake and it goes to the ocean and it evaporates and back, right? So it's, mm-hmm. it's never ending. So I call it A, B, C, D, E, right? And, and the middle part, so you're attracting people to you, then you're bonding with them, multimedia, multi-step, then they become a customer. That's only the, the halfway point. Then you've got to deliver, you've got to delight, then you endear yourself to them, then you attract again because you took care of them. If I tell people the the sale is only the halfway point, I, I equate it to getting married. You know, when you say I do, is it over or is the relationship just beginning? It's going to be a problem if you think, oh, I did it. That's it. <laughs> we made it. Nope. It's just beginning. Well, but a lot of people do think that's it. I know. Well, <laughs> oh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but it's like, that's when the work really, truly begins. It's, I try to get people to, you know, think like Apple, right? I got my AirPods over here. I got my iPhone here. I got my iPad. I got on my Mac Studio. I got my MacBook Pro. How can I get them to buy four, five, ten times from me? Not just close them, get the sale and run. but. A lot of people still think like that. Mm-hmm. Well, can I push back on that? Sure. Bite me. Come on, bro. I, can I? My son just started boxing. He's been walking around like this. It's so funny. We got friends. We just we just went to Cabo with our friends from Texas. <laughs> and the, the wife calls her husband, bruh, what up, bruh? I'm like, what? I come in this. Petite little Mexican woman. You know, like, what up, bro? I'm like, Anna, you... no. So but, that's what my six year old son calls me. Everybody's a bro. I'm Everybody's like, okay. A bruh. So after a week, I'm like, okay, bro. So find me, bro. All right. All right. So, yes. And for my business, we were a two person agency. These are people I'm coaching. And anyone who's like a, um, doing some sort of delivery in a, in a small service, right? So, Remember, like a lot of people I talk to that they don't want to grow a team. They don't want to grow a team. They want to just stay small, but make more money. I find that if you make it profitable enough, and this is what we did. So we were selling like two, two day brand ups, you know, two day intensives, take a couple of days beforehand to prepare. It's maybe like four or five days total, um, $40,000. We make that and we're like, it's done. See you later. Um, I don't want to manage this. I don't have an upsell for you. I did this big strategic project for you. Go out into the world, market it. I can recommend people to help you with that. That's not what I do. Reinvest the time that I freed up for myself into marketing, authority building that keeps the pipeline full of new clients. And so it is a different approach, but I think that certain kinds of people and certain kinds of businesses can benefit really well from that that churn, which I know is like such a dirty word in business and sales. Look, look that's totally fine. And that's, I don't see that as a pushback. If, okay. if, if you were clear up front, yeah. hey, this is what I do. This, and, and I'm sure if they say, can you, can you recommend one or two or three agencies to hold our hand and keep us going? You probably, yeah. I'll, Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I can give you a list. I want so you're to. not leaving them in the lurch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And it's not this one call close, like try to get the money and, you know, and you go hide. So 
you know, that's, so that's totally fair what you're doing. And, and that has been, you know, look, that's why I had pushed back like from HubSpot. I was a HubSpot partner for 10 years and, uh, well, nine years as of last year, still a partner, but much more scaled back in, cause they, they want big agencies. And I'm like, I'm not, that's not my jam. Yeah. I help people sort, sift and separate, evaluate tools. I help them pick the right one. I'll help them get started with it. I'll set them up for success. But I'm not hanging out with them. That's not my jam. And, uh, you know, and they're kind of evolving now, kind of work with folks like me. But, you know, I lost a lot of money because they, they changed the rules. There goes a lot of ongoing commission, you know, but because they, hey, they're in charge. So I knew that going in, but it's still painful. How'd they change the rules? All these, all these companies change their commission structure. They can do that at any time. You had a, re- a, a relationship with them and an agreement with them, and then they just changed it? Yeah, because all what? all the companies, everyone I've ever worked with, they've changed their rules. It's just, and look, as a salesman, I would, my quota would change, my commission would change. That's the nature of the beast, because there's always a clause in there. It says, we reserve the right to amend, change this contract yeah. at any time, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of, uh, like network marketing companies that people are blowing up about because they, they're going like to a direct consumer model. You know, like you can be an affiliate, but all these people that built their big networks, like it's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, um, so that's fine. It, uh, but it did hurt, you know, when, when you give up, you know, $40,000 recurring commission and they're all still customers, right? They're still using their HubSpot. You know, HubSpot probably makes a couple million a year off of me from the sales that I made. We move on. It's not. <laughs> ah. So what can our listeners take from this? Because, uh, like, obviously not everybody listening to this is an, is an agency. They're entrepreneurs, salespeople, maybe a business sales manager, you know, to, at an SMB. Uh, what's, what's, like, some sales advice you've learned, like, from from pounding the street, you know, back in New York City. What's still working today? What are you seeing people not doing that they should be doing? Yeah. Um, I think one one thing I don't see enough, especially anyone who's doing sales for like, like any kind of work that's more strategic, an implementation, any sort of service providers, entrepreneurs who are selling their services, consulting, you said sales trainers, all of that. I think that they're they often are pitching before they've built enough trust. And one of the things that I like to teach people is how to sell that first step at kind of a no-brainer price and build trust through that process. I think that when money exchanges hands, the value is perceived differently. And when people pay you for advice, they hear it more and they value it more. And so if you can get people that pay you a little bit to give them a an idea of how you would solve their problem or or give them a solution, maybe like give them, give them the whole solution, but not the execution of it. It's going to be much easier to sell them a much bigger package down the road. Hold that thought. Have you been reading my mind? No. Have you been reading mine? I have a couple of things. Tell me. I have a couple of things along that line that I was literally, I'm revamping everything. I'm rebranding, I'm moving hosts, doing all kinds of stuff. I'm having my midlife crisis, but instead of buying a convertible, I'm changing my business. Uh, but I've had a couple of things. One, I call it pick my brain because people will, not everybody needs what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't need the full boat, right? They don't need a 12 pack. They just want a, a 12 ouncer, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and, and I offer a free call, you know, to, we can kind of start and, but it's quick. It's like, you know, are you serious? Am I serious? Do we like each other? Like a little pick, a little pick my brain, you know, an hour, 90 minutes, 395 bucks. I just kind of mm-hmm. pulled the number out of my butt and people pay it. Um, and then I've got a little deeper dive. I call my initial process assessment. Um, so for those that need, they need more than just a sounding board for a little bit. They, they need like, let's, let's get in your dashboard. Let's look at some metrics. Let's, let's look at the tool, your tech stack. Um, and then the big stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. Do I even want to talk to these people? But so I don't know. But but you like the, the baby step. Yep. I The way I've been doing it for like 12 years is I sell. Most people will sell, offer a free proposal, right? Somebody calls you up. I need this thing. Okay, let me write the whole proposal. I Forget don't do that. that. Forget that. Yep. 
I call it a lead product, basically like 15 minute free call. It's a fit call, right? Are you someone I can help? Do you have problems I can solve? Yes. Okay, cool. The next step is the lead product. Pay for it. I interview you. It sounds like a lot of this, like what you're talking about. Deep dive into the business. Let me understand the whole picture. The difference might be that I, and I think this is a, a valuable, uh, this has been valuable next step for those of us who want to upsell to like a whole service is, is an actual written brief that says, here's the plan. Here's the opportunity. You're here. You want to go here. The connection is what I'm telling you. You need to do, 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 do. It's a plan. You paid for it. You get it. By the way, if you want us to do all of that and you don't have to do it, it's this much. One price, all in. And then for us, it's like, and we'll take care of it in two days. Put it on the calendar. A couple weeks from now, it'll be done. And I find that the ease, that the trust built in that first part, just like you're saying with this, the trust built, I would never be able to sell the projects that I have sold and then delivered them in two days with a client happily being like, yes, yes, yes. Okay, bye. I would never have been able to do that if I was writing a free proposal. The only reason clients say yes to that upsell and then are happy to say yes along the way is because that first interview and that brief builds so much trust that by the time they get to it, they're like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do this. You seem to know exactly what it should be. Yeah, please do it for me. Sure. And so, so that to me, like in terms of sales conversation, like that, that's what I have to give to your audience. <laughs> Any way you can do that process in your world is going to be a winner. Yeah. I agree. I've been against proposals from day one. And, and, um, one of the templates I give people is how to, how to win 99% of your proposals, you know, and it's, it's to stop giving free ones, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like proposals should not be this fishing expedition. You know, it's a summary of what you've agreed to. So it's, it just formalizes what you've already agreed to. So you can start, but man, most people, they deep dives and then they worry, they never discuss price and they're, they're losing sleep and oh my gosh. And they're in such a powerless position because it's yes. just like dance, monkey dance, like prove to me that you're good enough. And that's a terrible way to start a relationship with a client. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, and then, so is it you and your husband that they go and do you go meet them? Do they fly to you? Is it depend? I mean, for the last, uh, gosh, like eight years, we've, it's only been virtual. Oh, nice. Yeah. Whole thing virtually. I mean, we have this office. We used to do them in person. I actually thought for the first couple of years, I only did them in person. I thought it had to be in person. I thought there was magic in the in person. Yeah. And then we had a couple of clients overseas and we said, well, we'll try it. And then it was so great. I was like, even if you're in New York City, you're not coming in. This is way better. Yeah. 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 I've been virtual forever. Uh, yeah. You know, when I was selling, I don't know, 80, 90 Infusionsoft accounts a year. You know, I, it was all virtual. It was, you know, golly, back then it was Skype. I would do Skype video calls. Uh, Nature then, of the product too, right? It's, it's an online Yeah, but product. a lot of people, a lot of people would do it in person. Oh, really? Um, and because that's what they, they felt comfortable. In. And I kind of flipped the script. When people would onboard, um, I had them send me their calendar but back in the day, a lot of people were not very technical. I mean, I think there's still a lot of people that aren't very technical. I'd have people, I'm like, okay, well, let's, you know, click in your browser. You know, you need to use Firefox or, or Chrome. I don't even know if Chrome was the thing back then. But what's, what's a browser? I'm like, what? <laughs> Netscape. But then I would have people like miss the calls. And, and, like I, I gave them a to-do list and they went through it. I said, when you get to here, click here, it'll send me an email, you know, and then we'll schedule the call. But then I had them drive and I navigate it because usually people, they're teaching software. They're clicking, making you watch. I'm like, no, you're going to click because that's how you build that's muscle smart. memory. Ooh, that's very smart. Yeah. Right. And so I back off. And you know, if they were under the gun, like had to do something, like, mm -hmm. okay. I'm like, look, I'll do it. You watch, we'll record it. But, you know, you're going to do it after this, but I'll help you meet this launch, you know. 
upload a database, go to a landing page, web form, email sequence, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I, I can do it in my sleep. But it's like, I didn't want them to be dependent on me. Like I told them, so I'm, my goal is to work myself out of a job. I don't want you dependent on me, you know? And so that was just, it was refreshing for most because most would sell it and they wanted this ongoing annuity, you know, not only of the software, but you retaining them. I just felt like people still do. You see dirty consultants, like they'll go buy the URL for you. I'll just help you out. And then they own your, they own your name. Right? And yeah. then you got to pay them, you know, a kidnapping hostage fee to release it. And like, I'm like, you go to GoDaddy. I'll show you. You're going to buy it. You know, just walk in. Oh, I understand why you're doing that now. Like, a lot of people don't get it. No. They just get ripped off. Well, and then these service providers are doing that because they, they're, they're pinching pennies. Like, I want this little bit of money every month or every year. It's like, get all of that. It's taking up so much of your time and energy. Get that out of there. Focus on the, you know, the bigger stuff, the profitable stuff. I don't want, I don't want to own any of your I'm like, here's the zip file with every kind of file, every, every raw file. You need anything else? Any designer can take our files and make it. That's how, that's how I want to leave you. Totally yes. empowered. Not yes. like some of these web designers who, to your point, keep it hostage. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. It's like, you're going to buy the theme. You're going to buy the hosting. You're going to buy the app. You'll make me an admin user. Right. So I can help you. But you own it. You can kick me out anytime. I so you, you've got a group, your Facebook group. Uh, should people join that or only certain people? Like who can benefit from that? Yeah. The, the Facebook group is there. <laughs> I'm not in there very much. The no BS agencies, agency owners group. There's a lot of free stuff in there. It's chock full of free trainings. So if like somebody wants to get lots of information and learn about all this stuff, that's a great reason to join it. But really the place that I'm hanging out more is Instagram when I'm not bricked. I'm on Instagram. When I'm and how often do you brick? I try to brick. I, I try to pick all the hours outside of work. You know, I try to be, I don't want to be, um, you know, mindlessly going into it in the evenings when I'm with my family, you know, in the mornings when I'm. Then you got to break your iPad and your stuff. laptop and your desktop. Oh, oh, well, my desktop's at the office. My laptop, I don't open it at home. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's contained contained which is which is what i needed to do for myself not everyone needs to do that but i needed to do that yep. it's given That's me cool. much better peace of mind mental health yeah yeah i'm most on instagram so um well you know in in my podcast agreement it said anyone whose husband is an artist you have to mail me a piece mail of art so which, which of one of the art. pieces back there are coming let's see which one's got my name on what it what do you what do you want we got here this is my favorite one That's, That's uh, cool. Yeah. The, Inspired by the Van so you, Gogh. you kick him out so you can do interviews? Yeah. No, he usually sits there and I'm like, stop eating potato chip. Like, I'm on an interview. quietly. Yeah. And he's like, it's boring. So yeah, he's not here. He's like, yeah, I do. Picasso have to juggle podcast interviews while he painted? No. We, we trade off days sometimes for that exact reason. But what if he's inspired? You can't stop him. He's got to wait. I gotta, I gotta be a peacock. To I be gotta on. be free. I gotta no. I gotta. I gotta do my thing. It's marriage. You do these That's things true. for each other. That's true. Well, I am linking to your Instagram. Pia loves it. your biz. Appreciate it. Uh, you got a. I'm linking to your free calculator to your book. They can download yeah. the first. Oh, you know what? Oh, Would you like something me. better than that? Bring it. Okay, so. My book, now I know I'm talking about all agencies, but like before I was just down on the, you know, one, two person branding agencies, I wrote my book for all service providers, anybody who wants to turn expertise into profit. So I think that's, that's your speed. Um, I just got the rights back, like the exclusive rights back from Amazon. So, or Audible or whatever. So it's still for sale on Audible. I um, took the rights back so I could offer it to some people for free. I'm not putting it everywhere, but I just did that. So if your listeners want a free audio feed of my book, I'd be happy to give that to them. Are you into it? Shoot it over to me. I'll okay. add it right here. 
Okay, I'll it's going to be show notes. it's going to be nobsagencies.com backslash the sales. In the sales. Of- nice. Well, hurry up because this will go live in about a week. So don't dilly dally. It's already there. I already did it. Cool. I got you. Nice. Oh, I like it. Nice turnaround. Yeah. Oh, then they will really be the first people to get it. Cool. Very cool. I will share it. Thank you. Appreciate Very that. Very nice. Well, Pia loves your biz. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the Sales Podcast. I appreciate it so much, Wes. Thanks so much for having me. It was, it was fun. great catching up. Have Thank a great you. day. You're in New York City? I am. You ever in New York City? I went one time, oh. and I don't know if I'll ever go again. Okay. <laughs> I don't Fair. even go to L.A., and I'm like 90 Fair miles enough. from there. Fair I go enough. to San Diego only because my daughters are there, and I stay kind of north of the city. Uh, gotcha. So I- I I could live in the mountains or the country and never see people and be fine. It's kind of odd that I do sales, right? Because like, that's funny. Well, that's why that's why I stay remote. I've been remote since before it was cool. Wow. Well, like so my mom you've says, had a leg up on us. My mom says, "I I what was it? I love mankind. It's people I don't like." <laughs> love it. Uh, but I digress. That's great. Anyway, Pia, anyway. thanks for my show. It was great seeing you. Thank you so much, Wes. Have a great day.